wrapped up floss tube. It is still Corona season, so I'm making another video. <laughs> I've been in one of those moods where I really want to do a lot with stitching, but I don't really want to stitch. <laughs> so I've been reorganizing things that are going to be new starts. I've been reorganizing the room. Uh, one change you might notice is the dresser back here. Um, this was my son's dresser. It was left in the room. He didn't want it when he moved out. And it was kind of one of those drab, uh, look, trying to make it look like it's old and antique, but it's not. It's not even real wood, you know. So I thought, well, I'm going to paint it. So why don't I paint it a fun color? <laughs> and it's the same color as I painted my, um, my sewing disc. You know, this fun little lavender periwinkle color. So I thought, eh, let's just paint it a fun color. Why not? You know, because I don't really want to paint the walls too much in here because, you know, when you move, you got to paint everything back to neutral. That and if, I'm real bad about picking paint for the walls. <laughs> I so many times I'll pick a color and it looks really good and then I get it on the wall and I'm like, oh, what have I done? <laughs> so I'd rather paint furniture that can be changed. <laughs> so, especially when it's furniture I don't necessarily like, but I'm going to use it for storage. Um, you can kind of maybe see in the drawers, like where the drawers are popped open, that's the color the wood used to be. And I keep the drawers open because I, you know, it being corona, se corona season, I don't really want to go and buy new handles for it. I'll probably just tie some ribbon through there to use as handles for now, but I keep the drawers pulled open now just so I don't have to like claw at them to get them open. And then I've got some whips and Tupperwares up there, or soon to be whips. It's mostly stuff that I'm kidding up. Um, I've got my trophy from when I won Best of Show for the fair for Teresa Wensler's Dragon Ride. Found that and I'm probably going to put a shelf up up here somewhere and display that. So yeah, still got a lot of work to do in this room. You guys cannot see what is behind you, but that's where a lot of the mischiever is. So, but anyways, stitching wise, I thought I'd show you a couple of my whips and then we'll go over some of the stuff that I really want to start. I'm not really thinking of like doing mania stuff, but you know, cause I'm not really much of a joiner when it comes to things like that. Like if I want to start something, I'm going to start something, you know? So, um, but you know, since everybody else is starting a bunch of stuff, why don't I join in on the fun <laughs> and just, you know, call it that. So if you want to call them mania starts, call them mania starts. I don't care. It's just stuff I'm starting. But anyways, I thought I'd show you real quick my progress on Taj Mahal Mandala by Chatelaine. I really love how it's coming out. Um, I did shoot a little video on this. Um, I need to finish this corner here, but it got to where I wasn't feeling like stitching on it. I really wanted to stitch Peacock Tapestry, and when that feeling takes me over, I swap things out on the stand, because what's on the stand is what gets worked on. So if I'm already kind of <laughs> in my mind cheating on a project, I best switch it because I'd rather stitch than not stitch. And if it's something that I feel like I'm making myself work on it, then it kind of taints the enjoyment of it. So I usually switch it out pretty quick. But I do love how it's coming along. I'm very happy with it. Also, these scroll frames are kind of new to me. I can't remember what the brand they are, but they're the kind that have the Velcro that you stick one end to the fabric and then you Velcro it to the bars. And then when you get a new project, you have to buy a new roll of the velcro to tape to future projects because you're supposed to like cut it off you know because the adhesive isn't going to work a second time i guess um, but i do really like that because a lot of shadow lanes are very large you know they take up a lot of space um just for reference let me grab real quick the bars for shadow lane serengeti that's how big serengeti is it's freaking huge and these frames, which are the, the, the basic kind that you can get anywhere, you can get them at Joann's or whatnot, um, they don't make them big enough. <laughs> so that, and this was kind of the easiest way I could find to get stuff on the bars straight. <laughs> so um, yeah, I just went with this, but I will be putting Serengeti on the bars soon too. I have everything for it. I have the fabric. I bought the kit from European Cross Stitch. I'm not including it in today because I don't want to start... I kind of want to stagger my starts on the Chatelaine Mandalas just because they're so large. I at least like to have the center portion done before I start another one because that gives me a good jumping off point in my opinion. And I usually, um, I say usually like I've stitched so many. This is as far as I've gotten on any of the mandalas. All the other ones I've done are the little itsy bitsy ones. But in general, um, when I start mine, I like to do the center and then start up. So 
that's why. <laughs> and it kind of tells me where my up is. I do have this ribbon tied on here. That way I know which way is up, you know. So I always put a ribbon on the top part just in case I lose track of where up is <laughs> on my chatelaines because it is a bit of a problem, especially with repeating patterns because this is the same here, here, and on the bottom. So, yeah, I like to go up first. But, um, so I don't want to start too many of them and then I feel like I'm not getting anything done. I do think that's what caused me to kind of go into my stitching hiatus. So, but yeah, there's Taj Mahal. So that's a current whip. Um, here is Teresa Winslow's Peacock Tapestry. <laughs> And this one, let me take it off for you. This one has been a long time whip. And I've act, this is actually the second time I've started it. So the first time I started this, it was on Ada. If you watched my Teresa Wenzler um, parade, you'll see this was the first design that I got. By the way, there's a bit of a stain on the fabric here. And this has been driving me crazy trying to get it out. So if you're like looking at that. I try to get it out, but I don't want to discolor the fabric because I think I have determined that leaves aren't going to cover it. So I might have to just make some up and put them on there. So we'll see. But anyways, I started this on Ada because back then I was okay with Ada. And then I became a fabric snob and I restarted her on a, a linen. So, and then I put her away for a while and didn't work on her. Um, if you notice, I did screw up with centering this piece. <laughs> it's got a lot of extra over here, not so much over here. I did at least stitch it to the point to where I know I will have enough fabric here and then I'll have to like serge some muslin on there for when I go to frame it. Um, my stitching style, I am a cross country stitcher, but I pick a focal point. Like I will stitch the peacock and then maybe I'll work on the tree over here and then there's the tree over here and then there's the tree over here and then there's the border too. So I'll pick an area and I'll focus on it. And if I get bored and I'm still feeling design, maybe I'll go focus somewhere else. So that's why it's kind of spotty. I do kind of want to get this top port part done, just so I can say that that section's done. I was having a lot of fun with the tail, <laughs> but I kind of couldn't let myself keep going on it knowing I have this tree up here to finish. So right now, I just need to finish back stitching the leaves over here. I've done the branches, the pears, and once I finish back stitching all the leaves here, I will go back in and I left out the filler stitches. I individually stitched all the leaves and the objects and then I will go back and stitch the filler. So that's where she is right now. And I'm quite happy with her. Now my new starts. Um, they're mostly all mermaids. <laughs> I did um, from doing these two girls here. I did decide, you know, I need to start getting some finished mermaids that aren't Mirabela. <laughs> I love Mirabela, but, you know, I want to cheat on her too. <laughs> so, um, I've got a lot of mermaids that I have stacked up for that. Uh, one, this I've had kitted up so long, I just finally put things on bobbins. This is for Deepest Love. Now, I consider Waiting for Ships, Mermaid of Pearls, Deepest Love to be like the original trio. And I don't have fabric yet for her. But I'm probably not going to start her soon anyways, because again, I don't want to start a Mayor Villa. Um, but uh, this one, fabric-wise, I'm thinking maybe a lighter sea foam color. I'm not really sure. I want to do it on a opalescent, though, because this one is on a very boring fabric. It's better than the pictured fabric, but it's still fairly boring. My fabric tastes were not that outrageous back then. Not that they are now. But the... Um, this one, she's at least on an over dyed, and I think it's an interesting color, and I think it makes her really pop. So I think compared to each other, this one's on a more boring fabric. So this one, I'm thinking maybe doing her on an opalescent, just so they each have something that is a little bit different. But my thing that is kind of bothering me a little bit is I'm in the mindset of I want to do the skin for the mermaids over one, and both of these girls are over two. So I feel like I have to do this girl over two, just so she kind of matches that way. The rest that I do, I will definitely do over one, though. So, new, mer new mermaids. But actually, before new mermaids, let's go on the next Chatelaine I'm going to do, which kind of um, coordinates because it is deep blue sea. Now, this is a terrible picture because my printer was running out of ink. <laughs> but basically, there's like this middle part, which is like a microscopic uh, sea creature. Then there's some corals and some jellyfish and some starfish and some seahorses. I might actually be holding that wrong. See, this is this is how it's easy to not know which, what's up and what's down. But usually, I like to print off 
just kind of a generic picture. And then I keep all of my Chatelaine PDF print-offs in like a inch ring, three ring binder. And I like put this in the cover just so I know which one it is. I will be using my new style scroll frames. Again, I can't remember the brand, but you know, they're the velcro -y ones. Here's my fabric. Oh, I love it. This is Ocean Fancy by Silk Waver. It's an opalescent. It is a very blue color, and there is blue in this design, but I think it'll still work out. Like, let me show you the floss real quick. So that's the floss. So see how it kind of like, woo, looks really juicy with that fabric. There are some blues in here that are kind of close to these blues, but I don't think it'll be a problem. Here's my silk pack from European cross stitch. I know this isn't doing it any justice whatsoever and you really can't tell this unless I pull them all out and I don't really want to pull them all out because when I stitch my chatelaines I keep them in these bags so I don't want to pull them all out and have to throw them all in again. But oh it's so yummy and there's a lot of um let me see if I can isolate them. There's a lot of metallics for this design as well so it's going to be nice and sparkly. And then here's the bead pack. There's a lot of beads and treasures on this one and they all stand out fairly well and that's one reason I felt comfortable doing the design on this fabric because I felt when everything was laid on it enough of it was popping some of it was kind of blending in a little bit but not to the point where I got too too worried about it but yeah I'm super excited about this fabric I just oh. <laughs> I love it it's so juicy so yeah, that one I am going to be starting fairly soon. I really am just tempted just to mark the center and go with it. But <laughs> I always have technological issues with printing out Chatelaine stuff. As you can see, I need new printer ink. I have the center and all the, port, the side panels printed for Deep Blue Sea, but I'm not happy with how closely zoomed they are. It is a little too far off. I could get a magnifying glass, but I don't want to do that to myself. So I would like to zoom in and print it a little closer. I have to remember how to do that though. And I need to get my printer ink. So that's on the to-do list before I can actually start it. I guess I could mark the center and throw it on the bar. So, but I've got other stuff to start too. So here's a non Mirabila that I'm going to be starting soon. And this one I'd seen on eBay and just finally, it's a little pricey on eBay, um, especially now because you don't see it so often. But this is Brilliant Mermaid. This is by Dome, which I'm thinking is an Asian manufacturer. And they, the list, this is a big fold out chart by the way, but um, the folds are at least, they're separated. So you're not going to fold and obscure the pattern. So working copy for this one. But the um, fibers suggested and the beads are not DMC and Mill Hill. So they have a conversion for the DMC, but not so much for the metallics. There's a fair bit of metallics in this design too. And there's a lot of beads and they don't really convert it to Mill Hill. So I am kind of guessing, shall we say, with this one. Here is the fabric I've chosen for her. This was fabric that was in my stash. This is from Stab and Stash and it is Island Spring. It's an opalescent. And I always find it super satisfying when you can reach into stash and pull fabric out because I am a little bit of a hoarder and sometimes I like don't want to let myself buy something if I know it's just going to go in a drawer and not get used. Like what's the point of buying it if you're not going to use it, you know? So I am super excited when I can pull something out and I'm like, ooh, yes, I finally found the piece for that fabric. That's kind of satisfying. Uh, this design, one thing I'm super excited about is she's blonde. You don't see too many blonde mermaids. I don't think there's a single blonde mermaid in Mirabila. Some of them are on the auburn side, but most of them are brunettes. I don't even know if we have any redheads, you know, so. Uh, I am kind of, hmm, not sure if I like that with some of the colors. So let me show you a handful of them. There's a lot of kind of pumpkin-y colors in here. Now, her chart is in color, and I like the colors of the chart better than the colors in the picture. So I think, you know, these are already converted. So I might just play around with the colors a little bit and make it something more what I like. Um, I don't have all of them either. So, and there's a fair bit of metallics. So I got those in there. And I'm going to play with those too. 
again, I'm going to try and make them match the chart, not so much the printed image. And then I haven't bought any beads for that yet. Um, I think I'm just going to go by, they have like the beads listed by color. So I think I'm just going to play around with that a little bit. So I don't think I'm going to be starting her first. What's probably getting started first is a mirror beetle. I know, don't judge me. But this girl, Renaissance Mermaid. She is one of those, when I came back into stitching, I was so excited when I found her and I just thought she was so pretty and I, she was like one of the first things I bought. Um, got her all kitted up, which is funny when you see her floss colors, it's mostly skin colors. I think a lot of her tail is the uh, metallics and I think I still need a few metallics for this one. Um, the fabric I'm super excited about. This is another fabric I had in stash and this is by um, someone on I think Facebook or eBay and they don't really have like a name and the fabric's not named so here it is <laughs> but I love it. It's like this um, tanzanite -y color but look when I hold the bead pack on it. I just I love how that looks. I think that's going to be really cool. And I like that it's um, not your traditional ocean blue color, but it's still blue enough to pass for like something in the ocean. I don't feel like you have to do a mermaid on oceany colors, but I do try to make it at least still believable, you know, like that she's in water because usually they are depicted as being underwater. So, but I really love this fabric. I think it is so cool looking. I am converting the beads to Delicas. Um, I have a couple, like, let me pull out the ones that I've kind of picked. So, one of the colors in here is super easy. It's a clear silver line, so I've got plenty of Delicas in that color. But these juicier colors over here, I'm not quite, um, picked yet. So, but I've got a couple other Delicas that I think are close enough. I'll still probably use the treasures, but I've got to buy some more Delicas closer to these colors, which kind of, it was kind of funny. My favorite colors, if you haven't noticed, are purple and aqua and when I hoard <laughs> my Delicas I tend to buy a lot in those two colors because they're my favorite colors so when I actually found oh I actually need to buy more turquoise and aqua I was a little bit surprised I thought for sure I'd have exactly what I needed but oh well I get to buy more Delicas now yay and then this design I'm super excited to start it, but I'm not 100% committed to fabric on this one, and I think you'll see why. But this one is Bella Filipina's Air of Atlantis. I love this mermaid. I was so happy to finally find a mermaid with a purple tail because I'm actually converting, waiting for ships to a purple tail. Haven't done much with it, but yeah. So this one. I was super excited when she came out because she's very pretty, she's very cool, she's different. It's a different designer, not a mirror Vila. Um, still in the process of kidding everything up. I don't have the metallics or the beads or anything like that. I've got a fair bit of the fibers. And here's kind of what I was thinking fabric-wise. I used the viewer for this and it looked really good on the viewer, but you know how sometimes you get something and you're like, uh, I don't know. And it even looks worse on camera than it does in real life. So I'm not 100% committed to this fabric yet. I might shop around a little bit more. My thing is, I don't know if I want to go lighter or darker. I kind of like her on the darker because her, I don't know, her tail colors are so dark that I feel like if I put them on a light colored fabric, like, I don't know, I think they'd pop more on dark, you know, like darker than her tail at least. So, but I've got to play with that. She's a brunette mermaid too. So many brunette mermaids. Yeah, that's um, the to be started stuff. Um, I would like to start other stuff too. I mean, but again, I don't want to go too crazy and I'd like to stagger these out a little bit. So probably the first one that's going to get started is Renaissance Mermaid just because I have everything to go there except for the beads and I usually add the beads in last anyways. So I can still go shopping for them and get them while getting some stitching in on her. Um, then I've got to look more for, are these the colors I'm going to use for Brilliant Mermaid? I can start my Deep Blue Sea though, so I will probably make that a priority. Um, I would like to get a little bit further on Taj Mahal, like maybe a solid halfway point before I start working on it. And then I'll probably do Deep Blue Sea until I get the center portion, uh, excuse me, center portion finished. And then maybe I'll start adding Serengeti. 
And I do have some more coming to me from the European Cross Stitch site for their sale. One that I'm super excited about starting, but again, I don't have the fabric for it, so I cannot start it. Um, oh, and one other thing I started, just to show you real quick. Um, I had this chart, and I wanted to do it on a gray fabric. This is by the Witchy Stitcher from Etsy. And I knew I had, like, this gray fabric, but I couldn't find it. Well, then I found it, and it just, like, overtook me that I was like, oh, my God, I have to start that design now since I finally found the fabric. So I was like, let me stitch weirdos. So I got the, the weirdos work done. It was funny. When I started stitching this, it kind of occurred to me, I don't stitch words very much. I usually stitch animals or plants or things, you know. I don't really stitch words. So I don't know. That was just a, a strange thought. I don't do words too much. But one thing I like about this design is she's added watercolor, like, to make the words look streaky. And I'm going to do that, too. I think it'll look nice. So, if you don't know, this is a quote from The Craft. So, I was in high school in the 90s. I like that movie. So, yeah. All right. So, that's what I got there. Um, I'm still organizing my stitching room a little bit. Um, I'll probably share my haul when it comes in. <laughs> uh, it's been a while since I've really had much haul. Um, so yeah, I've got some more fabric on the way. Uh, some of it I'm considering for deepest love. Uh, maybe I'll find something that I want to stitch one of those other mermaids on though that, um, you know, the mermaid of Atlantis, the heir of Atlantis. I keep calling her mermaid of Atlantis. She's the heir of Atlantis, but you know, I'm still not sure what fabric she's going to land on, which sucks, because when I put her in the viewer and I brought up that fabric, I was like, ooh, that looks so good. But then when I got it, I was kind of like, mm, which, you know, you kind of expect that, because a lot of times when there's fabric choices in the viewer, it's like a very specific piece of the fabric, and then they throw the design on it. Well, you don't know that that exact bit of color is going to be where it's going to be, you know, so I think that plays a lot into it, so. But yeah, I still need to finish kidding her up before I make that decision. So I'm going to try and do some more work on Peacock Tapestry, get a good bit of chunk done there. I would like to finish that one this year, so, uh, and I'm really kind of feeling the rhythm of it right now, so I'm going to stay with it. <laughs> um, hopefully you guys are staying safe and isolated. Hopefully we can all get back to work before too terribly long, but it's more important to be safe. So enjoy your stitching, and I will see you guys next tube. Bye, guys.